Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialists. Today we have a short presentation on how to determine what size salt cell you are going to need for your pool. So what size salt cell do you need for your pool? Okay, the agenda for today is first we need to calculate the pool volume in gallons. Then you, we need to determine how much chlorine the pool actually requires some of the other water chemistry considerations, i.e. things that consume the chlorine, and then sizing up the salt cell that best fits your pool. So let's get on to calculating the pool volume in gallons. Um, you might be able to Google this on internet and get some nice little fancy calculator. But the simplest way is if you have a rectangular pool, the surface area is length times width. If you happen to have a circular pool, it is the radius squared times pi, or 3.14. And then as you get into some of the other options, oblong, and then even your, I'll call it, kidney-shaped pools, which are odd-shaped, then the calculations get a little bit more complicated. So you need to understand the surface area and then you need to figure out the average depth. So the average depth is going to be the depth of your shallow end plus the depth of your deep end and then you divide that by two. Here is a very simple example of a rectangular pool. And as you can see, the volume equals length times width times average depth times a constant of 7.5. So our average depth, we're going to calculate that out, is 3.5 feet. Our sh deep depth is 8.5 feet. We add those together, divide it by 2, and we get 6 feet. So that means that our volume is going to be 50 feet in length, 25 feet in width, six feet for our average depth times our constant of 7.5 and that's going to give us 56,250 gallons. A more typical vinyl liner pool, which uh, I would bet the majority of the people out there are going to have a pool roughly this size, is going to be 36 feet in length, 16 feet wide, five feet for your average depth times our constant of 7.5 and we're going to wind up with 21,600 gallons. So we could narrow it down and say this is a 20,000 gallon pool. Okay, for the most part, chlorine demand is dependent on exposure to the sun. And that means that the latitude has a lot to do with how much sun exposure you get. The demand is going to increase as the latitude approaches 23.5 degrees. Why 23.5 degrees? Well, this is the summer solstice. So in the summertime, that means that if you are at 23.5 degrees um, on the summer solstice, that sun is directly overhead. So what happens? So why is it that you go to buy a salt cell and it says that, well, this cell is sized for a 20,000-gallon pool? Well, that is because originally all of the salt cell companies were based out of New Jersey. And in New Jersey, that demand is 0.35 pounds of chlorine per 10,000 gallons. If you come to North Carolina, that demand now is 0.5 pounds of chlorine per 10,000 gallons. If you go to Florida or Texas, and when I say Florida or Texas, I'm really talking about Miami or Houston. And here, you are basically on the summer solstice, and so you're at 0.7 pounds of chlorine 
per 10,000 gallons. So that are kind of those are kind of your different areas. You can narrow it down to: Am I in the Northeast? Am I in the Mid Atlantic? Or I am I in the Southeast? Or even the Southwest, for that matters. There are a number of conditions that will increase the chlorine demand. If you do not have the proper stabilizer, cyanuric acid, it's called CYA level, then you will get what's called chlorine burnoff. Basically, this is sunblock for the chlorine. And the correct level per the CDC is 20 parts per million to 30 parts per million. Okay, so there has been a lot of debate over this over the years, and a lot of the pool stores want you to be at 80 parts per million. The reality is, with all of the research that has happened, they have found that once you get above 30 parts per million, there is no additional benefit to the stabilizer in the water. Quite oppositely, it works against you. When you get to 50 parts per million, it reduces the effectiveness of your chlorine by 50%. And then when you get to 100 parts per million, for the most part, the chlorine is completely ineffective. And most states require the pool to be drained and refilled once your CYA level gets to 100 parts per million, mainly because you effectively have no sanitation. Another thing that affects it is bather load. Um, how many kids do you got going in the pool? How many adults do you have? Are they sweating? It, do you have dogs going in the pool? Dogs will create an incredibly high bather load. A lot of the numbers come out that one dog equals 25 people. So if you've got dogs and they're going into your pool, this is going to consume the chlorine. Algae. It might be present and not visible. So it could be there. It hasn't formed into a bloom yet, but it's eating away at your chlorine, and the chlorine is fighting the algae to try to get rid of it. If this is the case, Simply add some algicide and some shock, preferably liquid chlorine, and that will address the chlorine demand caused by the algae. Bio waste and sunblocks, um, contaminants of that nature, they will also decrease the chlorine. The best way to actually fight against this is to use enzymes. This will usually resolve the problems with bio waste and sunblock and oils and other toxins of that nature. Nitrates. Nitrates are coming in through your fill water. And then also if you happen to be fertilizing and the fertilizer gets blown into the pool or washed into the pool when it rains, you're getting nitrates in your pool and that will consume it. Phosphates. Phosphates don't actually consume the chlorine, what happens is it's food for algae and it also coats the plates on the salt cell and therefore reducing the chlorine production. Another thing, last item, is high total dissolved solids affect the effectiveness of not only chlorine but pretty much all your chemicals. Chlorine production is based on the pump running 24 hours per day. The salt cell production set to 100%. And it is really intended to maintain the chlorine level in the pool. So the numbers that I gave you earlier, which says 0.35 pounds of chlorine per day in New Jersey, 0.5 pounds of chlorine per day in North Carolina and 0.7 as you get into the Miami and Houston areas. Those numbers are just to maintain the chlorine. I'm not adding anything to it. I'm just maintaining it. 
So with that said, and we're a Pentair house, so we're firmly believer in the IC20. If you're looking at the Jandy product, it's a PLC 700 or the Hayward product, which is a T7. They produce 0.7 pounds of chlorine per day. And this is why it is advertised as supporting 20,000 gallon pool because that is a 20,000 gallon pool in New Jersey. If you want to come down to North Carolina, that IC20 really only supports a 12,000 to 13,000 gallon pool. If you actually go down into Florida, the southern Florida, or southern Texas, you're going to find that it's really only about a 10,000 gallon pool that it supports. Pentair also makes an IC30, which is not on this chart, but it's somewhere in the middle. Realistically, you're going to support about a 15,000 gallon pool in North Carolina and a 30,000 gallon pool in New Jersey. And IC40, which is one of their kind of mainstays, you're going to see this on most of the pools that are, I'm going to say, average of 25,000 gallons. Jandy's equivalent product is a PLC 1400. Hayward's equivalent product is a T15. And it produces 1.4 pounds of chlorine per day. So, again, here we go back to the advertised as supporting 40,000 gallon pool. And that is true if you're in New Jersey or somewhere in the Northeast close or above New Jersey. As you come down to North Carolina, that's only going to support a 25,000 gallon pool. And as you head into Southern Florida or Southern Texas, that's only going to support a 20,000 gallon pool. Pentair makes a product that they call an IC60. Jandy doesn't have an equivalent, and Hayward doesn't have an equivalent. And this produces two pounds of chlorine per day. So in concert with everything else, it's advertised as supporting a 60,000-gallon pool in New Jersey. If you come down to North Carolina, it's going to support a 37,000-gallon pool. If you wind up down in southern Florida or southern Texas, it's going to produce a, a enough chlorine to support a 30,000-gallon pool. So be aware that these numbers are kind of arbitrary, and they are all based out of the latitude of New Jersey. And once you get down into the southern hemisphere, you're going to require a larger cell to support it. And again, this is the pumps running 24 hours a day. So I strongly recommend that everybody goes to the energy efficient variable speed pumps. This way you can run them on high, clear your pool off, and then run it at a much lower speed where you're consuming about the same as a 60 watt light bulb as his pump is running in the middle of the day and all through the night. And that makes it practical for this pump to run 24 hours a day and have your salt cell produce the full amount of chlorine that it's actually intended to produce. If you run these at 100%, you're going to find that the salt cell should last you roughly four years. As you require less percentage of the salt cell, it will increase. And it's basically just a calculation of how many hours you're running it, and that will determine how much those plates are going to deteriorate over time. Most of the salt systems will tell you when you're at end of life. Okay, adjusting salinity. So a Pentair salt system wants to function between 3,000 and 6,000 parts per million. The ideal is 3,500 parts per million. 
if you're talking about Jandy or Hayward, they want to function between 2,500 parts per million and 4,000 parts per million. And their ideal is 3,000 parts per million. So if you're shooting for 3,500 parts per million, you're going to make everybody happy. How much salt do I need? Well, here's a chart below it. And if you ever need to look up the chart, we have it on our website. Um, simply you look up how many gallons your pool is, what your current salt level is, and then it tells you how many pounds that you're going to have to add to make that adjustment. So uh, it's kind of engineering stuff, but I think most people can figure it out. You just It's simply looking, crossing how many gallons and how what your current salt level is and what it's going to take to get the pool to actually 3,600 parts per million because that will work with any one of the systems. Thank you for watching. Please drop us a like. If you found it educational, please follow us. And thank you again, and have a great day.